sorry you're staying late again, Ray, but that's the key to longevity. Stay vital. You've got to stay vital. You've got to be in the middle of things, mate. Tim is a male. Twenties hit three times in the chest. How much have you heard so far? Well, we heard he was dead, then we heard he wasn't dead, then we heard he was going to make it, and maybe he wasn't going to make it. It doesn't look good, I'm afraid. He's lost a lot of blood. The odds aren't great, but an update should be forthcoming. Who is he? Just the name right now. We're trying to sort it out, but we did find a gun on the scene, and we're trying to get an ID on it right now. This is the witness, Ray Boskins. He works as an assistant manager at the Apex Cellular down the street. I do, Ray. I'm Eddie Arlette. This is Detective Inspector Pip. And listen, I read part of your statement. I'm, we really appreciate you hanging around calling an ambulance. You might have saved a man's life. Um, sorry, you had to witness all this. That's OK. Now, look, I know it's dark, you know, and these things happen really fast. And you said nothing registered. But listen, I've been a cop for about 10 years. Whenever we're into the situation where somebody thinks they didn't see anything important, usually after some time, something comes back to them. Now, I was wondering if and when we get some suspects together, if I can put them together for a lineup and you can look at them. Can you do that, Ray? Just come down, take a look at the lineup? Yeah, sure. Great. Bloom, he's here. Hi, Inspector. Uh, just received some uh, news I think you should be made aware of, sir. All right, Lim, what is it? It's a serial identification number. Just come back on owner of the pistol, sir. Yeah. Crikey. I saw number three standing there. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Thanks, Ray. Do you know who that is, mate? Oh, no. <laughs> He's Colin Kinney. He's like our preeminent football player. He's like the Michael Jordan of uh, football. Yeah? Really? Yeah. Well, he's going to jail. I'm not going to work. So they finally fired you. What, did they catch you stealing lip gloss? I have taken the week off, thank you. This is a me week. Oh, a me week. A week to enjoy myself and do things that I want to do. Things that make me happy. Not my boss, not my friends, not Nigel, but me. I'm dedicated to being happy this week. And you know, if I want a bloody toaster, I want to get it without thinking, how much is it? Can I afford it? Do I really need it? Any of that stuff. I just, just want to do it. Go for it. Well, I'm glad you feel that way because you're paying half. Oh, no. 
idiots. It was supposed to be silver. Uh, you specifically ordered it in silver. What's wrong with the old toaster? It didn't make me happy. All right. Dude, dude. Yeah, it's a madhouse. How's Colin feeling, sir? Is he feeling OK? Have you said anything yet? Are you going to charge him with a criminal yeah. assault charge? Are you going to charge him with a criminal assault charge? Hey, 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 hey. This is ridiculous. Tell me about it. Yes, thank you. Just give me a quick... That's short, guys. Give me a really good grab at the front. Yeah. OK, this is the file on uh, the shooting victim. OK, Martin Moon. Is he still stable? Yeah? Yeah, so far. I'll tell you what, let's send some guys to go through his place. Let's talk to his family, his friends, employers, find out what he was into and what he was doing in London. Right away, sir. I see one. I want to recant my testimony. I made a mistake. I made a terrible mistake. I picked Colin Kinney out that lineup last night because I'm a fan. It's as simple as that. Now, Ray, you didn't recognize him as a famous ball player. You didn't realize who he was until after we told you. That's true, Ray. Well, last night, he meant about as much to you as he did to me. No. Yeah, I mean, that's right. But you said so yourself. Sometimes people don't realize what's going on in their own subconscious. OK. <laughs> Look, this guy's a star. He's on the TV week in, week out. He's in magazines, he's in adverts. But seeing him there in the flesh, standing there, well, it was out of context. What I mean is, have him standing there in the same room as me, it didn't compute. I picked him out of that lineup not because of the shooting, but because I realised who he was subconsciously. Do you see what I'm saying? I want to recant. Looks like we better get Colin's lawyers in here. This has gone on long enough. Colin should be out training for the biggest game of his career. Without him, his team don't stand a chance of winning the final this weekend. By any measure, Colin has been more than patient. And we appreciate it. So I heard you're quite a soccer player, Colin. Football. Oh, football, sorry. I'm partial to baseball myself. No kidding. Is this going to last much longer? Sorry, could you stop being so subtle? <laughs> You've officially informed us your eyewitness has withdrawn his identification. Colin is a celebrity. There is a circus of media out there which he is now forced to deal with because of your race to judgment. Subtlety? <laughs> There's no place here. I agree. I think we've wasted enough of Mr. Kinney's valuable time. He's free to go. Just as soon as he can tell us how his gun found itself used in a shooting. We've been through this. He doesn't know. Now, the gun was at your house. It was in a safe, mostly. And when was the last time you used it, Colin? When's the last time you saw it? Well, I've told Don't you that, Colin. Are you going to lay charges? A man was shot. He's in critical condition, Mr. Langley. I'm just trying to ask a few questions. Is he free to go? No. No. No, he's going to sit here in jail until you let him talk. I don't care if there are 15 World Cup games, he's going to miss every single one until he levels with me. to myself. It's not vital, right? I'm looking for a guy named Martin Moon. Was a shooting victim, came in a few nights ago. Straight down. Thanks. Eddie. Oh, dear. Right. None of his family knows what he was doing here. He went out one night, night of the shooting, and he never came back. He's got quite a good reputation around town. He's a bit of a bit of a tough guy. Is he got any friends? Is he a member of a gang? He's putting a list together. 
All right, let's get back to the street. Somebody must have seen something. Are we still canvassing the area of the crime scene? Well, we've got all these names and addresses to get through. I mean, we will get through them. It's just going to take a while. All right. Let's cover some ground this way and get a move on. OK, sir. I've got a sex lunch with a very showy estate agent. You can't expect me to work. Take a job you love, never work another day. Hey. Hello. How you doing, sir? Detectives Arlette and Pippin, Scotland Yard. Hello, sir. We had a call that somebody here might know something about a shooting that happened down on the street a few nights ago. Ah, uh, yes, that's right, detective. Hurry, Dad, stupid ninny, where's my bloody juice? There are two things that Wilson is passionate about. Mathematics and the Ferrari 360 Medina. If Wilson said he saw a Ferrari 360 Medina out of his window that night, he did. And heard. I heard it too, Dad. I told you you're so stupid. If Wilson said he saw and heard a Ferrari 360 Medina out of his window that night, he did. I saw the back of it, just at the bottom of the road. It was silver. Yes, me. Hi. Can you check something on the computer for me? So, Wilson, you sure you didn't hear anything else that night? Maybe some guys yelling? Just the sirens. OK. You know, I uh, drove in one of these one time when I was in New York. You can't afford that. You're just a crummy policeman. I said I just rode in one, you know? I don't, I don't want one of these. I'm happy without one. Sure you are. I'll tell you what, Wilson. Your dad says you're good in math. By the time you're old enough to drive one of these things, you'll be, what, 16? They're going to cost about a million pounds each. What do you think the odds are that you're going to be able to afford one? Do that math. Yep, got it. Yep, OK. OK, our guy does not own one, so uh, we're going to have to go and have a chat with the dealership. Boom. Hey. Bye, Wilson. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Wanker. Brat. Wanker. <clears throat> Question. So what's going on, Ray? Detail. Try me. I thought I'd do some investigating. I saw him the night of the shooting. Colin. Yeah, I did. So why did you recant your testimony? Because the whole thing's getting out of control. It's become a national obsession. I didn't know what I was letting myself in for. I mean, the backlash. Backlash? Yeah, the backlash. Everywhere I go, everyone hates me. Everyone wants to kick me in the privates or worse. I mean, I can't believe this. I'm just a simple man who's found himself in extraordinary circumstances. My wife's left me, I've lost my job, and my son's getting beaten up at school. My own son, who now, by the way, despises me. It's not easy telling the truth, Ray. It's not easy lying, either. Look, I had problems at home before all this, I admit it, with the wife. But this situation's made the whole thing worse. Now I've recanted my story, I lied about what I saw. She just thinks I'm a coward and she's kicked me out. OK. But. It's not exactly a lie. I mean, I can't remember what I saw. I can't be absolutely sure. I mean, this situation is so surreal. It's playing tricks with my mind. But what were you doing inside the Ferrari dealership? But I did remember a Ferrari. It came to me the next day about what I saw the night before, or what I thought I saw. I thought if Colin actually did own a Ferrari, then I know that what I saw was what I saw. My pal's got a jazz showroom down the road. He put me in touch with a Ferrari salesman. So where did you find out? You ever let anybody test drive any of these things? From time to time, we do allow certain exceptional clients to test drive the cars for the weekend. Well, the night in question, Colin Kinney was in possession of one of your vehicles? Yes, he was, sir, the entire weekend. Was it silver? Yes, it was, sir. Thank you. Can I use the bathroom? I'm planning on recanting my recant. It's not going to do us any good, Ray. You can't recant your recant. Bloody hell. My car. Go home, Yank. Oh, I don't believe it, they nicked my stereo. Eddie, Ray. 
<laughs> you look better in the flesh. I want all their names. I want them all written up, especially the fat one. It's a bit inflammatory, isn't it? Oh. What police protection, and I want it now. as soon as it's finished. Hello, Miss Moneypenny. Detective. What do you say? I say... Oh. Yes. Oh. Oh, more. Oh. Yes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Fellas, let's talk about Ferraris. That's right, we know. This is getting old, Detective. The cut final is in three days. You have no proof he's done anything except not answer your leading questions. Do what's right. Do what all of London knows is right. Let him play. Do you deny that you were given a Ferrari? No. No. Because he was at the scene of the crime. The one that you say you know nothing about? Yeah, we have witnesses that put it there. Your only saving grace is that maybe this top drawer lawyer here might be able to find a way in court to paint you as smart enough not to have driven such a conspicuous car to a shooting. At least that way they can't nail you for premeditation. Go be careful, Colin. That's right. Be careful, Colin. Because your celebrity's not going to play in here. And what you say counts, and you can't put a spin on it. I thought you said you're going to cooperate with us. We are. He's talking, isn't he? You're playing games with me. If he didn't shoot anybody, then he knows who did and he was there. The more you don't talk, the more pressure he'll have to let you go free. Don't say a word. It's your right. It's on them, the burden of proof. Is it your game face, Colin? Well, this isn't a game. Well, I know you're looking at me like you wish you never met me before, and frankly, I don't really care. Like I said when I first came in here, you're gonna sit there and you're not getting any help from anybody. Nathaniel, my friend, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you, Terry? Under the circumstances, not very well, as you know. I trust you received my letter. In league with Collins management, I have tried on numerous occasions to sit down and come to some understanding with Detective Harlett, but he seems to have taken a personal dislike to Colin, making it very difficult to enter into any constructive dialogue. I see. On behalf of the company and myself, I'd appreciate you taking the lead on this, Nathaniel. We must have some closure. I agree. I want to put him back on the pitch where he belongs and move on, put the entire thing behind us. Terry, the victim, Martin Moon, has died. Colin. Colin, don't say a word now. Listen to me. The rules have just changed. That's right, Colin. Big ticket item. Should you say something incriminating, you will not walk out of here, they'll have you. Take my warning and keep your mouth closed. I don't have to talk, we'll be able to play. Yes. You don't have to talk, you don't have to say anything. They will let you go, they have nothing. This is a bluff. Look at you, Colin. You're getting nervous. You can't sit still. You're starting to fidget. When you're not fidgeting, you're pacing back and forth. The guards tell me you're not sleeping much down there, and when you do, you wake up screaming. Now, I know that you have something to say. Colin, look at me. They want to bust you. You want to play in that game? Keep quiet. Do you have anything to say, Colin? So the game is the most important thing to you, Colin? Yes. Even though a man's died? Yes. Langley's right. We can't hold him another day without a formal charge. If you're going to take down one of London's heroes, better find something concrete. Dig. Make something stick.
Listen, Ray, I know it's been tough going so far, but it's about to get a lot tougher. Can you do me a favor? I mean, if you say no, I'll completely understand. Well, Ray, this is all you. Oh, hey, listen, the dog's name is Pete. If he tries to mount you when you're sleeping, just say no, sternly. But don't look him in the eye. Oh, no. Uh -huh. Well, who are you? I'm Ray. Ray's a guest of mine. Well, well, you have to go. He doesn't have to go anywhere. Why do you get to have people over here? To make me happy. It's happy week. And those are painters. Those are our furniture company removers. Well, we don't need any furniture or new paint. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Eddie. Of course we do. They don't go with the new rugs. Oh, the new rugs. So I got to pay for that, too? Yeah, only half. But you owe me a new cell phone. Why? Well, I was sick of him chewing the bloody TV remote all the time, so I hid it, and he retaliated by rooting through my purse and tearing apart my mobile phone. Look. So it was sort of your fault, then? It's black! You know what? That would look great in silver. All right. It's PC Loom, sir. Sorry to call so early. Yeah, don't worry about it, Loom. What do you got? Uh, we're here searching the flat of the victim in the Colin Kinney case, uh, Martin Moon. Yeah? Well, it seems they knew each other, Martin Moon and Colin. They knew each other, sir. So what time do you think Colin left that night in the Ferrari? The Ferrari? Yeah. You know, your husband's Ferrari, the one he had the weekend in question. You know, the loner. I talked to everyone else in the house just to see if they could help me out with the recollection. You know, they're all pretty consistent. They all said they heard a sound around the same time. I mean, that motor, it's pretty hard to miss. I was just wondering if you heard a sound at a certain time. Around 10? So he left at 10. Well, I didn't see him in the car. I just heard it. Also, it could have been somebody else. Maybe. It's funny, that's funny, because that is what Colin's lawyers said. So the car leaves, then what? I was in bed. I took a sleeping pill. Ah, mm. sleeping pill. So you probably didn't hear him when he came back. Did he know a guy named Martin Moon? I don't know. Colin knows a lot of people. So he does know a guy called Martin Moon? I said I didn't know. So why wouldn't Colin tell us he knew a guy named Martin Moon? Well, I don't know if he did. That's the name of the guy who got shot, yeah? Martin Moon? He knew Martin Moon. He called him the night before he died. Well, that doesn't mean he shot him. Why would he shoot him? Exactly. Why would he? You know, I think you know Martin Moon. Or at least I think you know who he is. I think you saw Colin drive away in the Ferrari. I think you know what time he got back. I think you know a lot of things. Oh, really? Really. It's amazing. And this guy had everything. You know, wealth, success, beautiful house, beautiful wife, beautiful child. <laughs> Where is she? We know. Someone took your daughter, we went to your house, we spoke with your wife, and she came clean with me. I know. They're blackmailing him. Yeah? For how long? She was taken from the house three days ago. They've got money bet all over the world. 10, 20 million, maybe more. 
throw the finals and they'll let her go. Don't. And she does. Colin, who is Martin Moon? What happened? Martin was a guy I knew from one of the pubs I went to. Martin was hard. He was going to help me handle it, talk to them, see if we could work something out. He brought my handgun to scare him. They found it on him and they shot him with it. They shot him right there in front of me. They executed him. How many were there? Two. Did you see their faces? They wore stockings. Listen, I don't want any police involvement. I just want to play the game the way they want me to play it. I don't want to put April in any danger. These guys are serious. Do you want to see your daughter again? Then you want police involvement. Now believe me, without it, these situations often go very bad. Do you think they're going to call you after all this is over with? Colin, you throw this game, and your daughter's going to be dead by the time you take off your cleats. I've been around the block on a case like this, and believe me, there's enough heartache for a lifetime. I don't want it to come to that. I'm just trying to prepare you for the worst. Well, I hope to hell it doesn't go down like that. I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure it doesn't. But I need you to trust me. What can I do? Good morning, London Lancers fans. And what a day it is. Jailbird Colin Guinea has confirmed that he is fit to play in today's final. And the fashion desk is pleased to report that Colin is also free to cast aside those ghastly prison clothes and fit himself out in the height of fashion. Peter! Colin, the Lancers wouldn't have a chance today. With Colin playing, we could well see the cook return to the center. You said plain. You've got plain. And my lemonade. That's not a lemonade. That's all they have. I want a Mars bar. Frozen. Make sure it's frozen. I don't like it any other way. Do you think you could get that right? Bloody hell. Wanker. You let him chew my cell phone. Is that yours? I'm sorry. I want you to run the names of anybody who works or has worked at Colin Kinney's house. Yeah, anybody. Renovators, contractors, nannies, cable guys, whatever. Go back a full three years. Will do, sir. It's one hour before kickoff. He hasn't even got his cleats on. You ready? Yeah. You want me to what? I want you to play like you've never played before. You see, if Colin plays to win, they're going to call you and they're going to threaten you. They're going to call you, they're going to say horrible things to try to get him to stop. No, I don't care about the threats. I care about the phone call. The phone they contacted you on can be traced. If we can get them online, we can locate them. But I need them to make that call. Now, even if Colin does everything that they ask, there's a chance that your daughter still might not survive. And with no phone call to trace, they could just disappear into thin air. Let's go. 
Let's go. Hey, Ray. Thanks for coming in. You look terrible. What happened to your nose? I got nailed by an avocado. Listen, Ray, how long did you say you worked for Apex Sailor? I know, seven years, boy. How you doing? I'm Detective Eddie Arlette. This is Detective Inspector Pippin. I'm sure you remember Ray. I'm the lead investigator for a kidnapping case for Scotland Yard. And what can we do for you? I'm going to be needing Ray's valuable skills here in our investigation. I'm going to need some of your resources. Bloody vital, Ray. How long do we have to get things together on our systems, then? About 20 minutes. things out with your wife yet? I don't know that I can, Eddie. You know what your problem is, don't you, mate, yeah? You got married in the first place. Nice. She's a great woman. That's right, Ray. You stick with that. Stick with soul. His father's Satan. He has no soul. It's God's orders. Just had a thought. You know, I wonder where we were meant to be together in the first place. What do you mean? Well, it was me who forced the issue. I remember. First time I saw her, I remember exactly what she was wearing, exactly where she was standing. I mean, the exact spot. I could take you there today. You know, she had nothing to do with me in the first place. Well, how'd you win her back then? I sat outside of work for an entire day for two weeks, putting coins into her parking meter so she wouldn't get a ticket. That is just about the nicest thing that I've ever heard. Did you hear that? Yeah, we're coming up to half time. Anybody who has a story like that, Ray, deserves to be together. We're very happy. I mean, I couldn't have believed it just looking at you. Well, what are you saying? I'm not the type. No, I mean, I wouldn't have guessed. No? No. You know, it's funny. I remember exactly where I was when I started chasing her. But I can't remember the time when I stopped. Look, 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 look at this, look, look. <laughs> So everybody's been telling me to go home, and this impresses you? Yeah, yeah, I wrote that one. Oh. Detective, I've got a message from PC Loom, sir. He said he couldn't get through on your mobile. Oh, yeah, it's, you know, it's been chewed. Long story. What do you want? He said it's urgent. He wants you to call him as soon as possible. Who's Nicholas Orville? There's some lovely footwork there. What's he going to do here? Oh, he's, he's through. He's, he's taking them on. He's taking them on. He's taking on another. Kenny! Bitch. No, you call this bitch. Call this bitch. Hello? Your husband doesn't get the message. Shall I cut her finger off and send it off to her? No, please, don't hurt her. Listen, let me speak to her. Just Shall I let me know if she has been harmed. Please don't hurt my baby. Is she okay? Please. Just get the message to your husband any way you can. Got it. We're on the move. Units move to 26 Devlin Lane, London. SB4, 6DT. Go! Got a location. All right, let's go. Let's go!
Andrew. What's this? It's a relay. Don't turn. It's smart. I'll give him that. Oh, no. Please don't turn. You get the message to your husband anywhere you can. I'm done talking. And you are fast running out of time. <laughs> okay, take her out. Are we still got a signal? No, sir. Yeah, sir. It's Johnson. I don't need him to tell me what I've done. Detective Pippin. Hi, is Detective Arlette with you? Yeah, hang on, hang on. Eddie. It's Loom. What do you got, Loom? Did you get my message, sir? Yeah, yeah, who's dead? Uh, Nicholas Orville, a name on the list of personnel the groundskeeper at the Colin Kinney estate submitted. He's the only name that didn't check out. Nicholas Orville died ten years ago. Somebody's been using his name and national security number. I'm looking for an employee. Here's Nicholas Orville. Quick as you can. Let me get my book. Pippin, Come hello. On. Inspector Pippin. Put Detective Arletta on the line. Here it is. Bloody games, this is. He's playing bloody games! Another attack, first to Kinney. Oh, he's up there! Colin Kinney! There's only 15 minutes left in the match. We're done here. Yeah? Get the car. How do you like me so far? Told you not to hang up on him. He's always playing these little games. I'll see you in a minute. Okay. Can you um can you do me a favor? If you say no, I'll completely understand. Sure. What are you doing, Ray? Being vital. Vital? Vital. I'm vital. Can I, um... Can I come out tonight, Cheryl? No. Can I come back here tomorrow? Yeah. 
all right, though, so you can go. You sure? Oh, I know that look. I think I've got her on the ropes. The place looks, uh... Like it used to. Like it used to. Yeah. I like it. I like it too. Um, I'm getting the kitchen table. It's on its way back. It'll be here tomorrow. I see you got your toaster. You happy now? Hey, hey, come on. It's not as bad as that, huh? I don't know how to be happy. Oh, come on. Eddie, I can't be happy. Hey, nobody's happy. Are you kidding me? That's life. That's just the way it is. You know, there's, there's good days and bad days. You know, it's really, really good days and really, really bad days. That's... You know, it kind of makes life interesting, I think. Do you think I'm happy? I'm miserable. You are? Oh, yeah. Completely. <laughs> that makes me happy.